Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman. Happy New Year to you. I'm joined by our own Frank Stanfield. We're here to break down the week five waiver wire editions. What's happening, Frank? Not much, Greg. Excited to be here. Excited to bring you some new players that you should be focusing on heading into week five. Let's do this. Let's begin at the quarterback position where, Frankie, the quarterback that we're going with hasn't even played week four yet. But at least the week five matchup looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks great. It's Andy Dalton going up against the Arizona Cardinals, a defense that's still without Patrick Peterson. While they limited Russell Wilson to modest production in week four, they have still allowed 10 passing touchdowns this season, zero interceptions. They've also allowed the third most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. Andy Dalton going back home to play in Cincinnati in week five against this Cardinals defense. You know, it's a Bengals offense right now that under Zach Taylor leads the NFL in pass percentage. 72.9% of their offensive plays have been passes so far this season. So I think that they are going to air it out against this defense. I think it makes a lot of sense as well. We could see points on both sides of this game. And heading into week four, mind you, we're still recording this before the Monday Night Football matchup. Andy Dalton is QB 13 in fantasy points per game. He has had multiple TDs in every game so far this season. Last week against the Buffalo Bills, he had one passing touchdown. He had one rushing touchdown. And, you know, Tyler Eifert is in a good spot here as well. We'll get into him a little bit later on. But it's Tyler Eifert somewhat healthy at this point. You still have John Ross, who was leading the NFL in receiving yards heading into last week. Tyler Boyd is playing well. I mean, this offense, yes, they would be better with A.J. Green, but ultimately they've been throwing the ball around a lot, and I think that they're going to do so again in Week 5 against the Arizona Cardinals. Offense has been able to make a lot of progress against the Cardinals. Andy Dalton, as long as he comes out of Week 4 healthy, he should be the next in a long line of quarterbacks that have had a lot of success against Arizona. Make sure you get Andy Dalton off the waiver wire if you have a quarterback on a bye or a bad matchup. But if you're not going with Andy Dalton, Frank, there's another quarterback you can go with, and that's always the quarterback that's facing KC. This week, it's Jacoby Brissett coming off a home loss to the Oakland Raiders. Yeah, Jacoby Brissett coming off that loss against the Raiders, but should be able to put up some production here against the Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City heading into Week 5. Fun fact about Jacoby Brissett, he's the only quarterback to have thrown for multiple touchdowns in every game so far this season. He's actually tied for the league lead with Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson with 10 passing touchdowns on the season. So, look, he's not Andrew Luck, but he's doing his best impersonation right now. He's only averaging 228 passing yards per game. Does add a little bit on the ground as well, averaging 14 rushing yards per game, completing 65% of his passes, but... This game has a huge total. As of now, this has a 57-point total heading into Week 5. It's the highest total on the board. It's the only total that's over 50 points heading into Week 5. This this total is 8 points higher than the next closest total, which is 49 points as well. So even Matt Stafford looked pretty good against his Kansas City Chiefs defense in Week 4. He threw for 290 yards and 3 touchdowns. Hopefully, T.Y. Hilton is good to go in this matchup. He is still banged up dealing with that quad issue. But if he's not, expect a lot from the tight ends. Paris Campbell saw eight targets yesterday as well. I expect Jacoby Brissett and this Colts team to be playing from behind. So uh, I'm, I'm looking for him to keep that streak going of throwing for multiple touchdowns against the Kansas City Chiefs in Week 5. Let's see if Brissett can get the job done in Week 5 against Kansas City, get Indianapolis back to their winning ways, and we'll see if he can help your fantasy team out as well. Frankie, let's move on to the running backs. Those Cincinnati running back here, we'll get back to them in a little bit. But instead, Frank, let's focus on your boy, Rojo. Ronald Jones has been a coming out party over the past couple of weeks. There's been a lot of buzz in the fantasy community to free Rojo. It seems that Bruce Arians has done just that. And hopefully this is the final time that we have Ronald Jones as a waiver wire pickup for the rest of the season because that would mean that Bruce Arians is finally using him correctly and he has the value that we think that he can have. A lot of people were on Ronald Jones early on in the draft season because it's very clear that he is the most explosive running back on this team. Look at over the past two weeks, Ronald Jones, 33 carries, 150 yards, 4.5 yards per carry, two rushing touchdowns. During that same time, Peyton Barber has 22 carries for 67 rushing yards, just three yards per carry, and one rushing touchdown. In week four against the Los Angeles Rams, Ronald Jones finally outsnapped Peyton Barber for the first time in his career. So, yes, that is progress. And towards the end of that game, they were actually leaning on Ronald Jones to put away the Los Angeles Rams. They were not leaning on Peyton Barber. So, I'm hoping that this is a trend. Moving forward, specifically in week four, it was 20 touches 
for Ronald Jones, 82 total yards. He had a touchdown, as I alluded to as well. Going up against the New Orleans Saints in Week 5, not really the greatest matchup, but if we can get Ronald Jones with 15-plus touches consistently in this offense, an offense that now looks like they're taking off. Look at what they've done over the past two weeks. They put up a ton of points last week against the Giants. We saw what they did against the Rams yesterday. This is an offense that you want exposure to. So if we're getting 15-plus touches out of Ronald Jones moving forward, he's going to be in the discussion for a low-end RB2, high-end RB3, or flex option. So hopefully Bruce Arians just doesn't mess this up. This is the last time we're talking about Ronald Jones as a waiver wire pickup. We've been wanting Ronald Jones to break out for each of the last two seasons now, and it seems like it's finally happening, giving the majority of the workload to Rojo. And if we just continue that process, he's not going to be on this list anymore, Frankie, because he's going to be owned everywhere. Get Rojo now before it's too late. So it's interesting because in Tampa Bay, we wanted to discard the veteran in Peyton Barber to promote Ronald Jones. We kind of wanted to do the same thing in Philly before the season started, to bring up more Miles Sanders. But this week here on The Hurry of Frank, you're promoting the veteran. It's Jordan Howard. What? Admittedly, Greg, this pains me to say, yes, we all want Miles Sanders to be a thing for the Philadelphia Eagles, but if you've played fantasy football, you know that we don't always get what we want. And you know what? We might have been duped once again by Doug Peterson because all the talk was heading into the season, Miles Sanders is going to be the guy. Maybe he'll get off to a slow start, which for the most part, he has done. And he's had fumbling issues so far as well. That has led to a full-blown committee approach once again for Doug Peterson and the Eagles. And this is basically the same system that he's run the entire time that he's been with the Philadelphia Eagles. So we're coming off a Thursday night football game where Jordan Howard had a monster game, 15 carries for 87 yards, two rushing touchdowns, even added three catches for 28 yards and a receiving touchdown. Jordan Howard, not known for his receiving chops, 33 snaps to Miles Sanders' 22. Jordan Howard also ran five more routes than Miles Sanders in that Week 4 matchup against the Green Bay Packers as well. So yes, this pains me to say you can question it all you want, but the Philadelphia Eagles are... Nearly a two-touchdown favorite right now against the New York Jets heading into Week 5. They're expected to be playing with a lead, which means there could be a lot of time to grind out the clock late in this game. I would imagine that's going to be Jordan Howard, at least in Week 5. So maybe it's not for the longevity of the season. It's not a long-term pickup in Jordan Howard. But if you need a running back for this week going up against the New York Jets, Jordan Howard looks like a good play. It's certainly not sexy, but it's also not going to cost you all that much on the waiver wire to go out and acquire Jordan Howard. If anything, you know for sure through the first four weeks of the season, he's the goal line back. If he can get it moving against the Jets, Jordan Howard will become a valuable play. Howard, a cheap but smart option in, fans, in fantasy football this week. Frankie, let's move on to the wide receivers. It's not a great week for fantasy wide receivers either, but there's two New York guys we got to remember because neither played last week. But both could be valuable in week five. Let's begin with the Giants, where they get Golden Tate back from a four week PED suspension. And given that Daniel Jones is at quarterback now, Golden Tate looks to have a lot of value. Yeah, he absolutely does. Golden Tate returning in week five from his four game suspension, gonna go up against the Minnesota Vikings. Not as daunting as a matchup as it was once seemed to be uh, in terms of the Minnesota Vikings defense. Golden Tate has had 74-plus receptions in each of the past five seasons before last year's down season where he joined the Philadelphia Eagles. From 2014 to 2017, he had 90-plus receptions in each of those four seasons with the Detroit Lions. And personally, I think Golden Tate is a perfect fit for Daniel Jones' play style. Yesterday, in Week 4, Danny Dimes, 22 of 25 on passes that traveled 10 air yards or less. What does that tell me? He's really good at throwing the ball short to intermediate routes. And I've been saying this about Daniel Jones, and I've been saying this about Dave Gettleman the past couple of weeks. Maybe there was a method to the madness. If you look at the players that Dave Gettleman has surrounded Daniel Jones with, it's receivers that can make plays after the catch, receivers that excel in the short to intermediate. Well, look at Golden Tate. He's been top 10 in yards after the catch in every single season since 2013. So I think... He returns in week five. He's right back in the mix. I think he's going to compete for the team lead in targets with Sterling Shepard and Evan Engram on a weekly basis. I think he's a wide receiver three, plug and play in PPR formats moving forward, frankly, because he is a perfect fit with Daniel Jones' play style. 
Yesterday, Daniel Jones completed 22 of 25 passes on balls that traveled in the air 10 yards or less. That's exactly what Golden Tate is in New York for, as Frankie mentioned. All these short and intermediate routes. That's what the Giants' offense is, and Golden Tate's going to be a major part of that. If for some reason he's on the waiver wire, make sure that's not the case come this week. One player that we actually told fantasy owners if you were desperate, you could drop him, was Jamison Crowder. But week five, the Jets are past their by and hopefully are getting Sam Darnold back. If that's the case, Jameson, Jameson Crowder immediately has volume again because the last time these two players played with each other, he had 14 receptions. Hopefully, it's something like that again in week five. Yeah, Sam Darnold could potentially be back in week five, which would mean a boost to this entire offense. Robbie Anderson, Jamison Crowder, Le'Veon Bell, even if he's not back in week five, you want to buy low on those players because Sam Darnold is going to be back at some point. Remember what we heard in the preseason from Jets beat reporters saying Jamison Crowder could catch 90 passes, 100 passes this year? We thought it was crazy, but look at the week one usage when Sam Darnold was healthy with Jamison Crowder. Crowder had 14 catches on 17 targets, a 41% target share, and he's facing the Eagles in week five, a defense that just allowed nearly 300 receiving yards and a touchdown to the Packers slot receiver in Geronimo Allison. So it's a good matchup. This Philadelphia Eagles secondary is banged up, just allowed a touchdown to another slot receiver in Geronimo Allison. And when Sam Darnold is back, this offense will undoubtedly be better. Look, he's just better than Luke Falk. He's better than Trevor Simeon. And it seems like Jameson Crowder is the apple of his eye as well. Even if he's only averaging, you know, six, seven yards per catch, whatever it might be, it seems like Crowder is going to play that Jarvis Landry role in this Adam Gase offense. So buy low on the entire Jets offense where they're available, and especially if Jameson Crowder is a free agent. Sam Darnold has already been cleared for non-contact drills. Not exactly all clear, but he could at least start lifting and throwing again. Will he be back in week five? It's still up in the air. But what we can tell you is Jamison Crowder is going to be someone you're going to want later on this season. So grab him now. Frank, let's move on to the tight end position and let's get to the other bangle. It's Tyler Eifert who plays against Arizona and as we said with Will Disley last week, you always want a tight end that faces off against Arizona. Greg Olson in week three, Will Disley in week four, and in week five, it's Tyler Eifert. I don't think this is hyperbole. The Cardinals might be the worst team ever in terms of defending the tight end, at least through the first four weeks of the season. They've allowed six receiving touchdowns to tight ends during that four-game stretch. They've allowed two different tight ends to go over 100 yards receiving. You remember TJ Hawkinson in week one, Mark Andrews, in week two. Now, I know Tyler Eifert and CJ Uzama are splitting time right now, but Tyler Eifert is the one of the two that is running more snaps, uh, has more snaps per game so far through the first three games of the season. He has 21 snaps per game, whereas Uzama is averaging right around 18 snaps per game. Tyler Eifert also has more targets on the season as well. It's clear that Tyler Boyd and John Ross are the clear top two receiving options in this Bengals offense, but once those two guys are covered up, if they're covered up, then Tyler Eifert is the next man up, and it's just this Arizona Cardinals defense is just so bad against tight ends right now. So please pick up Tyler Eifert. I was telling people last week to stash Tyler Eifert for this matchup against the Arizona Cardinals. And honestly, if you play in a deeper league where you get a tight end premium, look at CJ Uzama as well. It wouldn't surprise me if both of these tight ends get in the end zone. Greg, I'll throw this back to you real quick for a question because you were a fan of the New York football Giants, and they were terrible against the tight end a couple of years ago. I'll ask you this. Are the Cardinals even worse? It seems crazy. It does seem nuts because a couple of years ago, it was absurd how bad the Giants were against tight ends. You could still count on them to this day playing against the tight end and starting your fantasy tight end uh, in that matchup. But with the Cardinals, it's, it's like a lock, and it feels really, really good to be able to count on locks because it's impossible in fantasy football to predict anything except start your tight ends against the Cardinals. It's that simple. But if you can't pick up Tyler Ivor for any reason, maybe there's another tight end you can go out and get. Who might that be, Frankie? We're going to go with the ghost of Jimmy Graham. He's back from the dead for the Green Bay Packers here. Devontae Adams obviously dealing with an injury. And Jimmy Graham is coming off season highs across the board in that week four matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles. Nine targets, six receptions, 61 yards, and a touchdown. And honestly, could have had an even bigger game if he could have held on to the ball when he was targeted multiple times in the red zone. He could have had multiple touchdowns in that game. But... Now, you have to pay attention to what Aaron Rodgers said heading into that Week 4 matchup was that he wanted to get Devontae Adams and Jimmy Graham more involved. That's exactly what he did, so I'm going to hang my hat on that, and I'm going to trust it 
moving forward. And the fact that this matchup against the Dallas Cowboys is a pretty good one in week five. The Cowboys are allowing the eighth most fantasy points to opposing tight ends so far this season. They allowed Evan Ingram to go off for 11 receptions, 116 yards, and a touchdown in week one as well. We're trying to find a tight end who can score a touchdown off the waiver wire. I think Jimmy Graham's a pretty good bet. Jimmy Graham, especially with Devontae Adams' potential toe injury, becomes a valuable resource. They said they wanted to get him going, and that's what they did. I love quarterbacks that actually tell us the truth, or coaches, rather, that tell us the truth. It was both Rodgers and LaFleur. It, it all makes sense. Jimmy Graham, a fine tight end to pick up this week. Finally, Frank, let's move on to the defense. It's not an easy week because nobody's facing Miami. So which defense are you streaming this week? We're going to go with the Carolina Panthers, Greg, who are hosting the Jacksonville Jaguars in Week 5. I know that... The Minshew mustache and Leonard Fournette are the flavor of the week right now. But ultimately, this Carolina Panthers defense has been a force all season long. They're fourth in total defense so far this year. They're number one in sacks on the season. Who saw that coming in? They have 18 sacks so far this year. They forced five turnovers this season as well. And they just limited a great offense in the Houston Texans to 264 total yards and sack them six times as well. I know Deshaun Watson is constantly running for his life. That offensive line is not a good one. But this Carolina Panthers pass rush is legitimate. I know that the Jaguars are going to try and run Leonard Fournette into the ground. But if they fall behind in this matchup, which might actually happen against the Carolina Panthers, they're going to have to drop back. They're going to have to throw it a little bit. And Gardner Minshew is going to be under some duress here. So I'm looking at the Carolina Panthers. I think they're in a really, really good spot heading into Week 5 against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Another game from Kyle Allen this week. Already Cam Newton's been announced out. We'll see what the Jacksonville Jaguars will be able to do to him. And more importantly for us, how the Carolina defense will start try to stop Gardner Minshew. That's going to do it for us here on the Fan No Hurry. Best of luck in your waiver wires this week. Make sure you spend that fab, Frankie. Thanks for having me, Greg. Let's go Bengals. Good luck, everyone. Tomorrow, J.J. Zacharyson will be here and let us know whose stock is up and whose stock is falling. Have a great night. Enjoy Monday Night Football. We'll see you tomorrow.